Folks, this is the June webinar. And we didn't do one in May because we had our massive owners conference at MGE and saw a lot of you there. What are we going to do right now? Well, the June webinar is all focused to getting ready for summer. Summer is an interesting thing for different clients. For some clients, it's their busiest time. For some clients, not so much. It It's a time when you know, your population broadly kind of empties out. Everybody's distracted. They got the kids, they go on vacation and stuff. Why don't you put it in the comment right now? Put in the comments, what happens typically for your summer? Is it a, a challenging time? Is it the best time? Good time? Not so good? No change? Put that in the comments. I'd love to get some feedback. I, you know, it's different for every area. Super busy. Gloria Jones, good. Slow down. Mix of both, don't know how that works, but gotcha, Casey, could be either, could. <laughs> Dr. Mercado, or good morning, listening uh, while cleaning out the garage. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, you gotta do what you gotta do at the time you got, which is limited. Summer time means dips in activity, gotcha, one. Busy with college kids back in town. Okay, Carmina, good, good. So this is a time to analyze what's going on. What has been in the past? You really want to go back and look at your stats. Look at your trends during this time last year for the next few months. That gets your prediction in. If it's a busy, crazy time, prepare to deliver. This is a time to get your team ready for that flow and make sure that you're not missing out on any opportunity. If historically it's really no change, well, then you obviously want to do whatever you need to do to make sure that it's super busy. And if it is typically by history, you're historically looking at your statistics, you're seeing that it's a down period. This is the time to juice it up. Thumbs up if you understand what I just said. When you're talking about, you know, Amy Evelyn and, you know, the group of practices that you have, Amy, you're looking across six different practices and that's that's a bit of work. Obviously get your management team to do so, get the office managers in charge of each of the respective offices to do so. It's a great exercise to just kind of go, oh, good. How do we use statistics, trends, not just this week and last week or this month and last month, but last year and be predictive about them. Next thing I want to ask you, how's it going right now? How's it going right now? So this is where I want you to say, listen, right now we're up, you know, it's busy, or we got lots of new patients, but boy, collections is rough, or our collections is amazing, but the new patients is downtrending. I'd like to know where things are at, and then we're going to bleed that into the next question. These questions are, are important for you to know those answers to. I want to know because I want to best help you. I've got a lot of things to talk about, but I really want to make this topical to what's happening with your practice. So we're slowing down due to taking away our new patient specials. But now that we have brought it back, we've slowly started to see things rise. Okay. Lesson learned on that one. New patients is up, but collections not reflecting that. Yep. And typically with a new patient flow, there's a couple of different things to think about that new patient flow is going to bring people into the practice. This is where they get to know you. You get to know them. Sometimes there's big cases that come from that. But what you're doing is you're putting your future there. So your new patients is guaranteeing your future. If your new patients is high, but your collections is low, that's time to work on your sales skill. Get your team through the ABCs, do some specific drilling, find out what the treatment coordinators are running into. Because people that are coming in is an interesting thing. I don't know what it's like in your town. But when you get new patients coming in, they've done studies. How many of those new patients need perio help? How many of them have, you know, some form of periodontal disease? And it varies based on where you're at in this country and in Canada. Typically, seven out of 10, five out of 10 in areas that are a little bit healthier in the beach cities where everybody's really health conscious. It could be four out of 10, but typically seven out of 10. And in some areas in the Midwest where, you know, sometimes it's just a little bit more challenging health wise, they'll see it eight or nine out of 10 patients will need perio. So, if seven out of 10 patients are coming in with some sort of periodontal disease, are you perio charting? Are you diagnosing? Is the hygienist in there diagnosing with the doctor? How is the closing going on that? Because one to four quads of perio, what's the value of that? So that's a good thing to check. Thumbs up if you understand that. Some of you might not. You're like, perio, what's a perio? Yeah. So office management teams, Here's what I want you to check. If whatever reason your new patients are up, but your income isn't reflecting, just inspect your closing. See if you have enough time in the schedule to present. If in this schedule it's being presented, but mostly being talked about by the hygienist and the doctors coming in for a quick three, five minute check, 
that's not enough time for the doctor. Is the hygienist or is your hygiene team, are they perio charting? Are they talking about it? Are they diagnosing the SRP? Is that actually happening? You know, when we go to a practice, this is outside of marketing, but when we go to a practice, the first thing we inspect is a sales line. The first thing we inspect is a sales line. Person might have us out to the practice at MGE. We go out there and they say, we want to do this and we want to do that. Fine. Fantastic. We're going to do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at your sales line. Almost invariably do we find opportunity there where something about the sales line has fallen out. There are points on the sales line, people that aren't closing like they should. They've been beat down. They've been beat up by patients. So great point to inspect. Okay, good. Let's see what else we got here. We got up on new patients, down on production. Okay. Turning up on hygiene department. Good. We're having a challenging time booking goal of 10K a day, just in doctor schedule. New patients are booked uh, into August and September. Wow, Jocelyn. Okay, good. If you've got that kind of flow, new patients and bookings booked way out. Well, you could say, well, that's fantastic. We are booked out four weeks, six weeks, two weeks, 12 weeks. Some people think that's great. That's not great. That's not great. That's time to start adding hygienists. That's time to punch out a wall. That's time to close down, you know, the office manager's beautiful office and turn that into an operatory and cut into the concrete and plummet if you need to. Office managers love it when I say that. Now that's time to like accommodate that flow. The flow itself is fantastic. You don't want to backlog it because what's going to happen if somebody needs a dental appointment and they can only book, they can only get in in a month or two, what, what can happen? Put it in the chat. I'm going to go somewhere else, straight on. So you start losing patients and yeah, they're going to go find another office. So you don't want to be booking out more than two weeks. And I know a lot of you are like, whoa, you know, you guys just, MGE just put us into power and we're booked out forever. Okay. Get with your power client manager, man. Hire them hygienist. Get those operatories lit up. Get them equipped. Bang out a space. Get a satellite office right next door. It's important. Then make sure that you've got your sales line in place. I cannot say that enough. Whenever I hear somebody saying, we got we got low new patients, we got low collections. Okay, well, you got to bang in the patients and then you've got to maximize your opportunity with the people coming into the office. Are you seeing people? Are you know your exams in? Is a hygienist talking up treatment? Is the doctor getting enough time to spend with that person? If the person doesn't have enough time that day to be seen and get a consult done, are we not mentioning the price? And it said, listen, there's some interesting things that we found. I need about 30 minutes to talk to you. Do you have 30 minutes today? I have it in my schedule. Do you have 30 minutes more? Because you're only booked to be here about another five to 10 minutes. I don't. Okay, good. Well, we definitely need to talk. Why? What, what's happening, doctor? What's what's going on? Listen, you know, it's not crazy urgent, but it is urgent enough that we need to we need to go over some things, but I need 30 to 40 minutes to talk to you about it. Are, are you available to come back tomorrow? No, the next day? You could make it the next day? Good, can we get them in the schedule? Two o'clock, can we get you in at two o'clock? Okay, good. You need me to write you a note for work? Yeah, just we'll we'll put that absolutely together for you. Let your work know that, that you know some things have come up on dental. You got your dental appointment today. Thank you for the time off. We need additional time, two o'clock, two days from now. Okay, good. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, but it is important. So we don't want to put this off. You don't want to be mentioning price and say, listen, it looks like you need about eight thousand five hundred dollars worth of treatment. Can you come back and talk to me about that in two days? What's going to happen? <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> Huh? Hello? Anybody here? That's all part of your sales line. You didn't come here to hear me talk about sales, but that's right, Gloria, they're not going to come back. So we don't mention price. We get them back in for a consult. You didn't come here to talk to me, you know, to hear me talk to you about sales, but marketing makes the phone ring. The phone rings. You got to have a great front desk team that takes that reach and converts it into a scheduled new patient. Then you got to get them in and we get them in. We got to see them about treatment. Thumbs up if you're understanding the importance of what I'm talking about, why we're talking about sales. So office managers, doctors, owners, I want you to inspect your sales line. If any time your stats are under pressure and, and you don't have the flow that you need, or you know whether you got a busy schedule, but you don't have the income, Okay, ding, 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 ding. The alarm's going off. Inspect your sales line. Oh, it's kind of thin. We got holes all over the schedule. Okay, well, the people that you do have in on your schedule, make sure you have the time to optimize that appointment and make sure they're being seen and properly diagnosed. We're never over-diagnosing. We're never pitching patients for things they don't need, obviously. That's, that's called 
fraud. We don't do that. We don't see that at MGE. We don't see overdiagnosis. So good on you. But are you spending the time that you need with the patients? Okay. Okay, good. Next question I have for you. What's been successful? And I'm asking you this, if you're starting to see some new patient trends that are successful, I might call on you to share about what's successful because we are here collectively on this webinar, not just to hear Dan Brown, but we're here to get the collective wisdom that this group of probably going to be a hundred of you sitting here today at the webinar, but there's going to probably be about four to 500 people that watch this webinar between now and the next four weeks from the recorded version. Share the love. What What is helping? What's working? And I want you to be general and I want you to be specific. So go ahead, put in the comments, what's successful? What are you finding that's been, hey, we started putting this in and this has been great. Raise your hand if your schedule could be a little bit more full right now. If you've got holes in your schedule, raise your hand. Good, thank you. Raise your hand if your schedule is a bit empty on the doctor production side, but your hygiene's under control. Doctor production is a bit empty, but hygiene is filled. Raise your hand. Okay, kind of. Okay, raise your hand if it's, man, I need to fill my hygiene. Raise your hand, I need to fill my hygiene. Good. So I want you to think with this. If you've got holes in your schedule, this is the first thing you need to attack. The first thing you need to attack is get those chairs filled. If we don't have patients in the chair, but you got the whole team there, you got the doctor there, you got the hygienist, this is this is expensive. Doctor owners and office managers, you don't need me to explain this to you. So the first thing you need to do is jump on the phones, jump on the email, get your reactivation manual program in place. If you need help from us, we'll do the digital. Like if you're a little bit shy on resources, you don't have staff that can help on that, contact us. We are going to help you with a digital reactivation program. That digital reactivation program will bang in hygiene appointments. And if you need some higher ticket sales, we've now got the digital reactivation program, you know, where we can kind of change things around and get you some larger treatment plans, okay? Whether it's clear aligners, implants, smile makeovers, cosmetic and stuff. So reach out to us. Okay, let's see what you guys put for successful actions. Getting patients in sumer for comp exam and x-rays. Excellent, Jocelyn. Then doctor can determine how to address a uh, profi appointment and calling recall patients that haven't been in. Good, I wanna take this up. What Jocelyn just said, did you all read or hear what I just said that Jocelyn wrote? Jocelyn said, getting patients in sooner for a comprehensive exam and x-rays. If you ask me what should be your new patient special, it is not cleaning exam and x-rays because that profi is expensive. That profi is expensive. You can get these people that are called practice hoppers. They're, they're, they're just searching for new patient specials. Raise your hand if you've seen practice hoppers. They just go practice to practice to practice. They're just taking advantage of a new patient special. Okay, you're always gonna get them. But when you do a new patient special that's an, an exam and x-ray, well, it's pennies, it's pennies. It's your assistance time. It's it's certainly your, your team's time, no doubt about that. It's not free, but when you throw a profi in there, when you throw a cleaning in there, there's two things that happen. You throw a cleaning in there and now all of a sudden, well, that person may not be actually eligible for a profi. And then because they got some, you know, they really need SRP. They've got advanced periodontal disease. You're sitting there looking at this person and you're saying, I can't do a cleaning. And they're saying, well, what is this bait and switch? You got me in on that new patient special. special. Now you're trying to hit me up for some expensive gum disease handling thing. And you don't need that. Raise your hand if you've heard that. Raise your hand if you've heard that. Patient gets upset because they can't get their cleaning. Yeah, that's one aspect. The second aspect is if they are a practice hopper, yeah, that profi is expensive to deliver because hygienists aren't in, they're not cheap. Hygienists are skilled clinicians. So you get a man on a comprehensive or even a limited exam and x-rays, just get him in there. What amount of doctor time, what amount of investment of time do you need at that point? So I love that. That's a great new patient special. You could do a $29, $49 exam and x-ray new patient special. Could do it free. The Profi do not do free, do not discount that. So that's a great one. Jocelyn also said in calling recall patients that haven't been in. Your patients that have missed their dental appointments, yet yeah, your lowest hanging fruit. There's two areas. If, if you wanna just get some business and, and busy the place up, two things, your referrals and your reactivation. Referrals and reactivation. For those of you taking notes, please write that down. Big, bold face, put some stars next to it. That's the first place to always start. Successful actions from Abby. Going into rooms to talk to patients about family and friends. Beautiful. 
ties right into referrals. And I'm going to tell you this right now. When you get that person who is a new patient and they're calling, once you buttoned up their appointment, say, great. Now, do you have any other family? Well, first of all, welcome to the area. Yeah, where, where, where are you guys staying exactly? Uh, fantastic. It's a great area. Good. Welcome to the neighborhood. Now, we've got you all scheduled up. Do you have any other family members that you'd like to get booked? And right there, you can pick up two, three, four more patients. Raise your hand if you've done it. Raise your hand if you've done it. So that absolutely needs to be at the kind of three quarters of the way through your new patient schedule. Make sure that process is in place. Then when they come in, absolutely talk to them. You know, Janice, so great to see you again there. And you keep talking about your husband, Ken. Sounds like an amazing guy. We've never met Ken. Does Ken have another dentist? Does he go to another? Well, he kind of. What do you mean? Kind of. What's kind of? Well, not a big fan of the dentist, but he tries to get there every couple few years. Every couple few years, Janet, you're amazing. You get here every six months. I know, but he really, he's really busy. And he's just kind of, you know, I don't know. Just not an important thing. Okay, let's do this. When was the last time he went to see a dentist that you know of? Well, I don't know. Could even be like a couple of years now. Okay, Janice, let's do this. Get him in here because he's your husband. No charge. We're just going to have a look. We're just going to do what's called a stability check. We're just going to make sure there's nothing wrong. Free exam and x-ray. Okay, but let's get him on the phone. You know, listen, people with healthy teeth and gums live longer, Janice. You want your husband to live a long, healthy life, right? Yeah, of course I do. Good. You know, people with unhealthy teeth and gums, Janice, you heard us talk about it. What are they more susceptible to? Well, I remember you said like heart disease and stroke. Yeah, pancreatic cancer, Alzheimer's. We don't need any of that noise. Would you agree, Janice? I, no, definitely not. Good, let's just, let's just take that out of the equation. Let's, let's get up on the phone right now. How many of you followed that? Raise your hand if you follow what I just did and said. Good. Where does that come from? It comes from that big thing you have sitting in your chest called a heart. You care. You really do care. Yeah, we're here. We're talking marketing and stuff like that. But all of this stems from your true purpose in all this. And your purpose has to be to help people. Raise your hand if you like helping people. Yeah. One, one sitting there like, yeah, he's pulling my leg. Love you, dude. All right, good. So I'm going to go back to Abby. So Dan Danielle going into rooms to talk to patients. Hey, Abby, what's Danielle's position? She's going into rooms to talk to patients about family and friends. I love that. What's Danielle's position? And then video testimonials. They're doing video testimonials. Great. Reactivation. We're doing their digital reactivation. Fantastic. Train front staff to flag patients who need handling and some who even handle themselves. Love that. Coaching them when they come in the door and building report. Oh, love that. Or catching them when they come in the door and building report. Love all those things. Great, Abby. Well done. Well done on what you guys are doing. And their stats are flying. I mean, they're really doing fantastic. All right. Mariah, Google reviews, new patient specials, care to share referral program, updated smile gallery on website, video testimonials, social media presence, and digital reactivation program. Mariah, I'm having you deliver the next marketing webinar. I mean, you just like named probably every single topic I wanted to take up this one. I'm going to go through them again. Folks, really, I mean, what Mariah just covered, word for word, button for button, topic for topic, write them down. Google reviews. Let's have a moment of honesty here. How many of you have kind of relaxed on it? You could be doing better. Raise your hand. You've kind of relaxed on it. You could be doing better. Raise your hand. Come on. A moment of honesty. Okay. Listen, I forgive you. I forgive you. Google reviews because A, patients read them. B, listen, I know a lot of you had a ton of them, like a ton of them. Smiles Williamberg, what do you guys got there, Amy? 18 trillion. I mean, you got, nobody is more reviewed than Smiles of Williamberg in Williamsburg. Google is not just tracking how many you have in your overall rating, but how frequently are you adding them? That is actually the highest weighted element of Google reviews when it comes to SEO, search engine optimization. How frequently are you adding them? You're telling Google, hey, not only are, are we pretty awesome in the past, but we're still awesome today. Google reviews. It's the first thing Mariah said. New patient specials. You've got to have reasons for people to move. you got to have a reason. And I know some of you are sitting, I don't like specials. I'm not the bargain basement dentist. I don't want to be known for like, hey, come on in for your dental special, special, special. Yeah, I get it. Take your dental hat off for a second. I want to see it. Everybody take your dental hat off for a second. Just take it off. Be a consumer for a second. Take it off. Take it off. Good. Good. Gary, I actually want to see the hat come off. All right. 
Take the dental hat off for a second. Be a consumer for just one second. How many of you have shopped around for a good deal? Raise your hand as a consumer. How many of you shopped around for a good deal? Good, good. Now, how many of you have paid a little bit more to make sure that the experience was a good experience? Like you didn't just go for the cheapest. You paid a little bit more just to make sure that the experience right. Good. You are what we would call in dentistry a fee for service profile. It's the person who, yeah, money's important. Like I haven't got a lot of money to burn, but I'm also, I'm also gonna make sure that the experience is a good experience. I'm not just gonna go for the cheapest because cheap and nasty doesn't work for me in dentistry. I, I don't want the person who's just gonna get me in, yank me around, shoot me out the other end and forget my name two minutes later. I don't want that experience. Now, some people that's okay with that in dentistry. And we don't want those patients because they just want the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest. We want someone who values our time, who values our compassion, our level of care. They value the fact that we're going to spend some time with them. And that's important to them. Money is a big deal, but they're willing to spend just a couple extra bucks. So that means even if they have to come out and network and come see you because you're not in network, they're going to do that. But they're going to do that because they read your reviews. What will keep them coming to you is they might not have insurance, new patient special, or they've already used their insurance. So new patient special. Thumbs up if you understand what I just said. New patient specials are important. Thank you. Next point that Mariah took up, care to share referral program. You've got to have a, an internal referral program and you've got to work your referrals as we've covered. Updated smile gallery on the website. Whoa, there are a number of pages that are important in a website. Your first and, and foremost of the priorities would be your homepage and have all the successful elements and for those of you that are on our marketing platform, they're built into our marketing platform. So you have those elements. The second most important page of a dental website, your smile gallery. And you got to keep it going. You got to keep it going. And it's got to be in the exact format that we lay out. I know some of you have got your designers and they're like, well, I want to have it like this. And I want a little bit more flair over there like that. Okay, listen, aesthetics, okay. But today people want big photos. They want them side by side. They want them, wow. I'll give you a couple examples, but boy, Mariah nailed it on the head. Updated smile gallery on the website. The next thing Mariah said, video testimonials. How many of you could do a little bit better on getting video testimonials from your patients? Raise your hands. In dentistry, clinically, perfection is important. Those margins, everything, the you know, and you've dentist. You are those perfectionists. You're an engineer of the tooth. Ah, awesome. Love those standards when it comes to clinical. When those standards come into marketing, it kills you because you're like, oh no, I don't know. That didn't, yeah, the audio is a little bit off. I don't know. The background could be a little bit better. I see a little bit too much, you know. No, 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 no. Marketing, quantity, then quality on marketing. Get it out there. Just get it out there. Us patients, we're like, no, oh, yeah, look at that. We don't see what you see. So team members of your dentist, keep your dentist away from the marketing stuff and the standards because sometimes they get overly concerned about quality standards. Thumbs up if you understand that. I'm not trying to lower your standards. I'm just trying to get you to understand. Get the content out there. Before and after photos, testimonials, even if they're a bit whack, okay, it could be better. So what? I'll show you an example of that. Social media presence is the next thing Mariah covered. You've got to do social media posts and digital reactivation program. Whether you want to use us for your digital reactivation or you want to do manual reactivation, I don't care even a little bit. I just want you to be reactivated. Good. Okay. We walked uh, some of our team through conditions and our hygiene schedule is doing a bit better. Love to hear that. Gloria Jones, nice job. Asking existing patients for their friends and family. Again, we're hearing it. That's a successful action coming from Kuma. Beautiful. Well done. Keep that up. Michelle, I love digital reactivation. It's helped our office uh, bring in old patients. Hey, those of you on the Bloomberg Digital Digital Reactivation Program, put in some of your success on this and how, like, how old are some of these patients? And I don't mean how, what's their age. I'm saying, how many years has it been? Like, what's your oldest you know, reactivation, the longest. Some of you, you know, I reactivated somebody who we haven't seen in two years. Some of you are going to say three years. I want to do a contest here. 
Let's see what else we got. Uh, we've used Bloomberg Digital Reactivation a few times. Good. And your best one, Gloria, was a free console. Yeah. So once we get you to a point that you've reactivated your hygiene, we move into like free consult, smile, makeover and stuff like that. Having the right team properly trained and implementing all the tools that you, Bloomberg, provide to us. Great to hear that, Victoria. Love that. All right. It's very rare we have holes in hygiene. Good, Jocelyn. We always make sure patient appointments are confirmed the day before. If not, we don't keep appointments reserved. Great. We also ask for feedback instead of review. It sounds better in our mind. I like that. I like that. Okay, good. What to do when patients expect their family members to get free or highly discounted treatment? I'm going to tell everybody here on this one. How many of you have patients asking you for discounts and it's an awkward moment? Raise your hand. You got patients asking for discounts and it's an awkward moment. Okay, good. Here you go. Oh, oh. I mean, I'd love to give you a discount. Believe it or not, it's actually built into your fee. We've got relatively low margin. So that is the discounted price. Um, for us to give you a discount, we'd have to do one of two things. We'd have to falsely inflate the price, which some people do. They falsely inflate the price and then they drop the price back down to what it would or should have been in the first place. We just kind of feel that's dishonest. I know that there's some mind trickery that goes along with that. Some people from a sales perspective advise that. We, we just think that's a bit dishonest. Or the second thing we'd have to do is we'd have to compromise our quality standards, meaning we'd have to buy lower quality materials, which means that the dentistry isn't going to last as long, which means we're going to have to have this conversation again sooner than we should. Again, just that's that's not this place. We only buy the best materials, the best cement, the highest quality stuff, because uh, we find that our patients don't like being here at all, like in the first place. So they certainly don't want to be here again. So we don't compromise on our quality. You might be able to go find this stuff a bit cheaper, but they're either going to be compromising on time spent with you, quality of materials, and we don't like to quickie things along. Some people will, you know, just come in with the biggest needle and hit you with the biggest needle. Our doctor might use two or three needles just to make sure you don't feel that initial needle. That might be a hundred dollars worth of needles, but you know, it keeps you from being afraid of the, the, you know, the procedure. So anyhow, that's that's our approach. I hope it's still a good fit for you. Thumbs up if that makes sense from a disc, you know, handling the discount question. Does that help, folks? Okay, good. Abby, marketing and new patient coordinator. So that's who she's bringing in. That's Abby is is the wife and office manager of Dr. Perry. They have put things in place. One thing they put in place is they got somebody over the marketing. You want something handled better? Put somebody in charge of it. Just try taking away your receptionist and, and having everybody handle the phones. Watch how that goes. Just try taking your schedule coordinator out and having everybody handling the scheduling. And then when you get that in, in marketing, you get like kind of, well, we kind of got somebody kind of handling the marketing. Well, and then we wonder why marketing isn't going well, especially when you're spending money on marketing. So Abby, are you there that you might be able to open up the microphone? There you go. You guys have have put in, you've basically taken every suggestion that Bloomberg Digital has, has. I mean, you guys just roll with it. We just say, you should probably do this and you do it. Can you tell me what some of those things are and uh, the result of having done so? What you see from the kind of before and after? Yeah, absolutely. So we've had um, different phases of our practice, but definitely the more successful actions is exactly what you said, um, having someone dedicated to that position. Our office is busy enough that um, now we need someone even on just reactivation and recall. Danielle also, we just um, expanded and she has um, Jenna who is um, handling the phone calls from new patients. So she is like now free to go into the rooms to do the testimonials, to do all those things. So she's, we're not spread too thin and we're actually able to really control and dictate what needs to happen. Just awesome. And then Abby, tell me a little bit about what you see from, you know, your your production statistics and stuff and some of the, maybe give me a couple of the times that you guys have knocked it out of the park from, you know, treatment that came in as a result of some of the marketing that you're doing. Because you guys are doing just about everything with Bloomberg Digital on the marketing platform. You're doing SEO, you're doing digital reactivation, you're doing ads. Tell me, uh, I think in the implant funnel, you guys are on the implant funnel. Just tell me what you're seeing from that. The implant funnel, um, I think. I know in April brought in um, about 100K. Um, so that was awesome. I mean, who doesn't appreciate that? We do everything that you guys recommend. Listening to you guys is 
um, on point. Uh, we haven't ever gone wrong um, implementing what you guys recommend. Yeah, I would say just making sure that um, the people that you have on it um, know the communication lines and stuff. Um, and actually, we haven't even done it perfectly. Like, I want to like advocate for that. You don't have to implement everything perfectly, but just moving and moving that direction of implementing has been a huge game changer. We've seen um, our numbers double um, quickly. Um, having a good treatment coordinator. She's an office manager actually now, so which is great. And then training up Danielle and everybody under her to just really keep the, the lines moving and not being stuck. Beautiful, beautiful. Everybody give them a hand, give them a hand. That's called implementation and it's not easy. And Abby, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I will tell you this, um, Abby, haven't we had some discussions where there were rough times prior to getting all this stuff going? Do you remember those rough times? And you were like coming out of Delta and it was noisy and Delta li literally attacked you, literally attacked you with your state and sent out disgusting stuff to your patients. I mean, you were on the phone giving me the story and I was surprised you weren't in absolute tears. I mean, it was horrible. So yeah. anything you want to share about that? Yeah. So um, anybody who is dropping um, insurance, especially Delta, I just super recommend um, the day that the contract says that it will be implemented, have someone in your office call the states, like the individual places, because in that contract, it states that they would disperse that information to all the other states and not just our contact point in Missouri. Um, they did not. And it took us longer than I care to say to realize what was going on. Patients were calling their insurance company. Yeah, they're in network. And yeah, and, we're, and so we're telling them one thing and then the insurance is telling them another and um, it's just not a cute look and it wasn't our ball that, you know, was dropped other than verifying that it actually got done. But it is the best yeah. thing that we have done. It gives us the freedom to provide what we need for our patients and it allows us to be very upfront about that when they come in of like, hey, yes, we're out of network, but that does allow us to give you the best care and insurance will do what it's therefore and it will help pay for some of this and we're more than happy to see you and we will you know we build them but you don't even have to do that and it just allows us that relationship with the patient that should be rather than having this like weird like person you know person entity kind of messing it all up more understanding. i don't know if you heard danielle she said the patients that? Are more understanding than you would think as well yeah yeah you know i mean you're going to lose patience when you come out of network you're going to lose patience but it's as scary as it sounds, it's you actually end up just kind of losing the ones that probably weren't the best fit in the beginning. I mean, yeah, you know, you're going to lose a couple that, you know, it's unfortunate and that they got to do what they got to do. But the people that you've built this trust, they're like, yeah, listen, I'm going to cost me a couple hundred more bucks to stay with you, but it's not I'm going to need it all that time. And I get to stay with the dentist I know and trust and the team that loves me and the compassion and the care. I'm encouraging everybody if you want to go that direction to get get set up to do so. Put your marketing in place first and then we'll show you exactly what to do and work with MGE, of course, in transitioning over smartly. Don't just go, okay, good, hey, listen, I heard what Abby had to say on the Bloomberg Digital Webinar. We're going and we're quitting all insurances. All right, and by the way, should we start marketing? Don't do that, don't do that. I'm gonna pick up a couple other things. How's this going so far? Is it valuable kind of? Come on, Dan, I came here for the real stuff. Good, I'm going to read one more thing. Oh, look at you, Amy Evelyn. 1,431 reviews for uh, Smiles of Williamsburger, you know, their, their main practice, what we call the beast, the biggie. It's just phenomenal. 1,431 reviews. I mean, it's that right there. When somebody's searching for dentists near me and they see 1,431 and the next practice they see has got like 112, it's the obvious choice. It's the obvious choice, Amy Evelyn. How long have we been working it? But just so everybody knows, the review program that's the Dan Brown certified, amazing review program that you know Bloomberg Digital has adopted. And guess where I got that from? This person right here, Amy Evelyn. Amy is the one who actually shared it with me initially and I stole it and I don't give her any credit, but today I'm mentioning it because I feel like I owe it. Amy, how long have you been working on reviews? Open up your microphone. We've been working on it for quite some time, but just, recently in the past year so trying to be more consistent playing games with the staff to get them in more consistently 
Tell me about those games, what you've done in the past. Cause you know, you run a game for so long and then it's just not, it's not new and exciting anymore. Um, can you tell me what some of the games that you've run in the past that have been like really helpful and got the staff behind it and share a little bit on that. We incentivize our office managers. They get $10 for every review that comes in from their office so that continues, they continue to wow. push their staff to get them. Wow. Uh, we also, we obviously do, you guys probably have heard about burden books. <laughs> the staff get burden books for doing. Some reviews. haven't talk about burden books and say it slow. Burden books, burden, burden. books. <laughs> <laughs> I know Dr. Dill does it too. Um, um yeah, Dill dollars or something. We're not gonna but... mention that here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Try to make sure I said it right. I think I think they're called yeah. dad daddy dill dollars or something like that. I think yeah, that's what dill we call dollars, them. Yeah, dill dollars, yeah, something crazy. But We're it's basically it that, monopoly yeah. money. It's 50 cent mm -hmm. on the dollar. It looks like monopoly money it has Dr. Burden's face on it. They get you know, for instance, like five dollar five burden books for a review, and they save their money throughout however long they want their burden books, and they get cashed out on whatever payroll they want. Sometimes we're paying out a thousand real dollars because they're banking their burden books. So it's it's a game for them. Wow. Um, right wow. now, we're also doing Love a it. point system for our all of our offices. So they earn so many points for reviews. This is something Alexis came up with. Um, to get the offices Ooh. more involved so that they're, they're on like a, I don't know, like they get so many points for reviews, testimonials, before and afters. And when they hit a certain level, like 200 points, they get a prize. Mm -hmm. So we have five prizes oh. listed on up to like 350 points or something. And that is a half day off, paid day off, half day or something like that. Something crazy that to get them to push for it. Hey. Alexis, you know, um, I, I must just say again, you, you know, I've, I've, you know, we had our meeting, I think it was at owners yeah. conference and I laid out some things to do. And now I'm seeing everything that, that we talked about, stick with it. You're doing fantastic. Sometimes it takes a little bit for this stuff to catch. So just carry on. Alexis, would you be willing to share that document to me so that maybe if people want, they could get some shared knowledge. Would you be comfortable with that? Would you guys be okay with that? He's going to steal that too. <laughs> I'm going to steal it too, you know, because I, I, I just love okay. to capitalize on wisdom. How many of you find this valuable when you get successful actions from others? It's vital, vital, vital that we share this wisdom. And I, I'm going to jump into this. Uh, Victoria shared this, the biggest, uh, Victoria, which we know is Liliana. The biggest tool was Google review QR code and training the girls to ask for it. Liliana, I'm going to call on you about this, but let me finish what you wrote here. So Liliana says, the biggest tool was a Google review QR code and training the girls to ask for it, responding to each one right away. That's every review you answer. After that, just giving the rest, the best of us, caring for our hearts and the way we handle the phone call throughout the experience in the office. We're all about quality, reactivation, referrals have been huge. And the video testimonials after the marketing seminar have been amazing. My marketing team rocks. Google ads, uh, care to share, and much more. We love you guys because you are the motor of this, Liliana. So here's another practice that when they originally came to MG and Bloomberg Digital, it was like, listen, we just want to busy up. We'd like to, you know, make a few more dollars right now. Liliana, how's the schedule looking? What's your biggest problem right now? So Liliana just walked out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but our, our big problem Look. is fitting patients in. We yeah. have no room. Yeah. And how many of you want that problem? It's so busy. I mean, it's literally like it, it causes them heartburn. Like they've got people that want to come in for treatment. They got all sorts of stuff. Anyhow, it's a great problem. Just look at where it all comes from. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from caring, spending time with the staff, caring about your team so that they care about their respective patients in public. I've got so much great input, you guys, and thank you so much, but um, I love that, Abby. Cro progress over perfection, life mantra. Progress over perfection. How many of you can agree on that on your marketing? Progress over perfection. That's your before and afters, that's your testimonials, that's everything, I love that. Jocelyn, we send out postcards every week, beautiful. We are building reviews and use Facebook and Insta for marketing. Love it. We also send out birthday cards and thinking of you cards and include our care to share program cards inside. Love that. Current patients and ones we haven't seen in a while. Lovely, lovely. God, there's just so much great input here. I'm going to take all the comments and I'm going to bottle it up. 
I want to share something with you that I think is important. Marketing is about verve. It's about enthusiasm. It's about having some excitement and, you know, making the day a little bit different than yesterday. How many of you kind of find yourself sometimes just kind of, it's the next day and you're kind of in a rut and patients keep saying, I only want to deal with the insurance says, and you know, all the objections and how many of you kind of find the the rut and you have to pull yourself out of the rut? Raise your hand. You got to, you got to pull yourselves out of the rut. You got to do that. You might have to do that every day. You might have to do that every hour. You might have to do it every week. I want you to get excited about summer. You get excited about summer and what it means to you in dentistry but not just in dentistry, just get excited about summer. So I'm going to give you some things. Hey, Britt, can you come on? I want to make a, a very important no. announcement. Britt, here she is. So Britt has taken over for running the day-to-day -day for Bloomberg. Alex, many of you know Alex. Alex has moved on. She got a great opportunity and she's leading some coaching group and stuff like that. She, we've been working on it for months. We've been keeping it quiet, but we've done the turnover. Alex Hamilton has moved on from Bloomberg Digital with Lots of love. There's no uh, love lost in that. And Britt, who's run marketing teams, actually, you know, we had to kind of sell Britt on coming over. She's come over. Britt, introduce yourself to the Bloomberg Digital family here and, and um, say a couple words if you wouldn't mind. Sure. So I've been doing marketing for about 20 years. I started off at a customer service, actually reception at a print marketing company doing postcards. Um got into live event marketing and then COVID hit. So I dove straight into digital. So for the past four years have just been producing websites and all of the services that Bloomberg offers um, and was just looking for, you know, the right team, a smaller boutique team. And I'm thrilled to be here. I love everyone I've met. I'm taking all the seminars um, that you have taken. So we're on this ride together and I can't wait to help you guys. Awesome. Everybody welcome Britt. This is uh this is big for us because Britt's got uh she's got some cred. She's got street cred and she's got, you know, a lot of marketing cred. So those credentials uh we've, you know, carefully selected. So we're very excited collective with Augustina who's heading up all of our operations and delivery and the amazing account management team we have. Kind of our secret weapon in the background. His name's John he and I are working on organization and structure and stuff like that because Bloomberg Digital is expanding. But we want to keep the same level of care and compassion and personal touch. So the team is just evolving. But Britt put some stuff together, and I'm just going to tell you, you may or may not want to celebrate these, but I want you to be aware of them and get these out in your social media and have fun with it. So July is National Anti-Boredom Month. <laughs> I love that. July is Anti-National Boredom Month. Man, I could think about 60 social media posts to celebrate National Anti-Boredom Month. I love that. So how many of you are gonna uh, write down some social media ideas on that right now? Raise your hand if you got ideas coming right now. Write them down, write them down. July is National Anti-Boredom Month. I love that. Well done, Brett. July 4th is Independence Day here in the United States. For those of you in Canada, you can set off a couple fireworks if you want to. July 30th is International Friendship Day. July 30th, International Friendship Day. What are we doing here, folks? We're finding things to celebrate. What is marketing? It's excitement. It's life. It's energy. Find some things to talk about. That's what it is. Some of it might be dental. Some of it might not. August 18th. Bad poetry day. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to run a Bloomberg Digital client bad poetry contest, okay? And and you are all entered in it. So I want some bad poetry. September 2nd of of course Labor Day. And then everybody know that this is wedding season. Put in the chat. What does wedding season mean to dentistry? Come on folks. I know a lot of you are very involved with the brides especially, but certainly grooms too. Teeth whitening. Thank you, Casey. Whitening, right, Michelle? Whitening and veneers, right, Kuma? Right, Ruby? Whitening, bright smile. Perfect white smile for that special day. Said it. Look, look at it. Gloria's even quoted me. Look your very best on that very special day. I'll be getting mine done in September before my wedding. Oh, Casey, congratulations getting married in September. So, Feeling confident with your smile. You, know, you don't need a wedding to do that. Lots of people need to do that. But I'm going to tell you this. Um, oh, and we offer a special for the entire wedding party. Look at that, Amy Evelyn. 
Ooh, that is clever. We offer a special for the entire wedding party. Well, I think that's a fantastic idea. Look at Amy. I'm going to steal that too, Amy Evelyn. <laughs> okay. Good. So, Britt, well done on those. Britt also made some other things, like summer events that you can get involved in. Food festivals. You could go to food festivals and find partnerships or get a booth there. Farmer's market, certainly a good time to get out there. Blood drives, absolutely. Whether Now, what does this mean? Whether you're a sponsor or a participant, the whole team going down and donating blood, document it, video, put some fun social media music to it. It's a great message. It's not a polarizing message. It's not something that's you know, uh, a topic that people are going to argue with. Giving blood, we're donating blood. It's a great thing. Not everybody has to do it, but the, if you guys do it as a group, great. Being part of a food festival and celebrating your community. Back to school drive, that's great. Let's see, we've had the Red Cross bus in our parking lot for the day. Amy Evelyn, look at this, look at this. I think that's a great one. Have the Red Cross bus in your parking lot and have your patients come and then come get a free exam and x-ray as a bit of a stability check. You know, that's free. Maybe you give them a free whitening kit or something if they come and give blood. I want you to get creative. I'm trying to stir the creative juices here. Who's getting stirred? Who's got some ideas? Good. <laughs> Michelle Alvarez is like, yeah. Let's do it. I, I want you to put your ideas in the chat right now. Write them down if minimally for yourself. Put your ideas, share the wealth. I'm about to run some stuff, a slideshow. Um, look at this, Jocelyn just put in here. We have clothing drives and have patients get raffles for a toothbrush and the money goes to the drive. Oh, I love that. Put your ideas in here, share, share the wealth, share your experience. What have you done that has gotten patients to get involved with the community, got involved with a bigger picture. You see, it makes you bigger than just a dentist. It makes you bigger than just a dental practice. It makes you bigger than just, a, you know, we're a business for profit. Yeah, listen, we have to make the, the business model work, but we're here for the community. We're here for the bigger picture. Okay, good. So keep your ideas going. Michelle Alvarez, we do patient appreciation basket raffle every month. Different theme baskets. Patients love to win. Love that. We've scheduled to volunteer with uh, Habitat for Humanity, and we are doing a free oral cancer screening at our local community senior centers. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We are currently doing a coloring contest for kids in our community. We also have a pack, um, the car for uh, school supplies drive in August. Love that, Casey. Beautiful. What do you got to do to get someone's attention? How many of you are over-commercialized? You get hit too much with commercial messages. You get too much spam email. You get spam text. Raise your hand if you get too many commercial messages. You skip YouTube videos. You know, I'm sorry, uh, YouTube commercials. Right. So you got to do something to get somebody to stop in their tracks. I just got you to stop in your tracks. What did I do? I paused. I slammed my hand in my fist. I got you to like stop whatever you're doing and look up. Is he doing it? Is he about to say something? Okay, what did I do? I got your attention. There's a lot of things. Right now, I'm fighting your attention for whatever's happening in the office, whatever text messages are coming through on your phone, emails that are beeping on your computer. Maybe you're like, also, while you're doing this webinar, you're kind of surfing Instagram because, you know, you can do two things at once. That is our public today. So if we're talking on the marketing side, you got to be disruptive. Put it in the chat. What was the word I just used? You got to be what? People are going along in their everyday life. La, 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 la. What do you got to be? Put it in the chat. Right. Disruptive. Now, I don't mean offensive. I don't mean destructive. I mean disruptive. You are going, whoa, 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 stop. Hey, look, put in the chat. How long do you think you have to get somebody to stop what they're doing? What time interval do you think you have? If they're looking at a postcard, looking at your Google ad, looking at a billboard, somebody said, you know, five to 10 seconds, I'm going to, well, you're going to be shocked. Mr. Hubbard says the following, in any promotional piece, be it an ad, a brochure, a flyer, a pamphlet, a poster, and he wrote this back in the, gosh, I don't know, 70s. This is before there were websites, right? You follow the line of, it's a three-step process. Everybody take notes. Note takers, write this down. You have to do it exactly in this sequence. Otherwise, you will not get the traction you hope. Step one, attract. That is step one. It's a verb. Get someone's attention. Get them to go, whoa, what? I'm sorry, what? Attract. Step one, attract. Step two, interest. Also a verb. So you got my attention. Hold my attention. 
Get me to keep looking. Step three, get your message across. Where does marketing fail, folks? Marketing fails when people just do step three, step three, step three, step three, step three. And that's what everybody's doing out there. They're just getting a message out there, getting a message out there. But they fail to do step one and step two. They fail to attract, get interest and hold attention, and then and only then get the message across. So I need that you all understand this. You're going to apply this in your social media posts, your Google ad, your postcards, your website. It's attract, interest, get your message across. Attract, interest, get your message across. Thumbs up if you understand that. Thumbs down if you're like, I got a question, I'm lost. If you have a question, ask it now in the chat because this is where marketing fails. This is where literally billions of dollars get wasted every year. Watch this, watch this, folks. How many of you, when you go home, you go get the mail out of your mailbox and you go, you take all the bills out, right? All the important stuff. And now you got your junk mail. How many of you walk over to your bin, stand over your recycle bin and you go out, out, out. Oh, that's kind of cool. Leave that one out, out. How many of you do it? Raise your hand, raise your hand. How many of you do it? Good. How long are you giving each piece of that, you know, the promotional piece that you're tossing in the recycle bin? How long are you giving it? One second, two seconds. Casey, I think you're being really, really, you know, giving on that one. I don't know, Casey. Uh, okay, one, two, out. One, two, out. One, two. Maybe. Most people not. Most people not. And Mr. Hubbard, like, he's, he found this as a pattern back in the 70s. Look at this. Look what he says. An ad is not textual information. It is a communication but it has to be a very fast communication because people won't look at it very long. It has to be able to deliver its message in about a quarter of a second. The actual test of a piece of advertising copy is, will it register in the instant it takes the individual to pick it up and decide he's going to throw it away? That's how fast it has to be. Just like this, when you talk, even on your website, your smile gallery, bam, attract. Oh, yo, oh, interest, what? Is that the same person? No. Get your message across. I'm only going to read that message now because that was disturbing. That was what? And then I'm going to read the message. Thumbs up if you understand that process, folks. Good. I'm going to do it again. Attract. Whoa. Wait, no, what? Larry wasn't happy with his smile or his missing tooth with some crown and bridge work. Gosh, what's crown and bridge work? And choosing a new shade for his teeth. What? You can choose the shade of your teeth? He is a new man. Not much keeps him from smiling now. Yeah, look at you. You go, Larry. That's marketing. Attract, interest, get your message across. Attract, interest, get your message across. I'm going to give you a couple more examples. I'm going to flash it on the screen and you tell me if you got the message. Okay, and it's thumbs up if you got the message, thumbs down if you didn't, thumbs middle, kind of. All right, three, two, one. Did you get the message? Thumbs up, medium or down? Okay, good. Next one, three, two, one. Did you get the message? Okay, some people who are fast readers can get there. I look at it and I'm like, uh, yeah, especially like a billboard is a perfect acid test for marketing. You're driving down the road, 55 miles an hour, 65, or, you know, some of you, 85. And you, you haven't got time to read this whole thing. I think it's cute when you read it, you know, laugh in the world, laughs with you, snore and you sleep. Okay. But it's not telling me what to do. There's no attract interest compared to bang. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. I, I'm just, I'm the marketing guy. I just document. But how many of you would would look at this, but you wouldn't look at this? Raise your hand. You wouldn't look at this, but you'd probably look at this. Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. And I can ask you, how many of you feel like these billboards would attract your attention? I'm not saying you agree with them. I'm not asking if you would actually run these billboards yourself for your practice. I just want you to answer this question. Would it make you look? Would you look? That's the question. Thumbs up, you'd look. Thumbs down, you wouldn't. So, would you look? Thumbs up, medium or down? Would you look? Everybody's got to vote. Put your thumb somewhere. Good. Would you look? Up, medium or down? Good. Would you look? Would it disrupt? Yeah. Yeah. Would you look? There's no right or wrong answer. You either would or you wouldn't. Would you look? 
Okay. Would you look? Okay. Would you look? Good. And my favorite, would you look? Yeah. So I want you to think you you got to you got to do something to catch someone's attention. That's got to be right at the beginning of a video. Uh, I'm going to give you a good example of it. Let's let's take a testimonial video gone kind of wrong. So anybody have any comments so far? I'm just sharing so far the thumbnail of it. Anybody want to write in the comments what's wrong? Anything that they see wrong? Too much background. Yeah, the schedule, glorious, specifically the schedule. I could read the schedule if I zoomed in. Yeah, my video editor had to blow, blow the schedule out. Yeah, open computer. Look at you all, you all HIPAA compliant people or up in Canada. I just found out it's not HIPAA in Canada. It's PIPA, PIPA instead of HIPAA. Okay, good. So um, angle. Yeah, and I think Steph is being super, super uh, kind about the way the angle. Okay, get closer, right, Britt? Okay, good. So this, I, I'm going to show you the testimonial. Let me make sure I'm sharing audio here. Now, you all say, you know, I don't know, my, my testimonial didn't look good. Watch what I can do with video editing, though. Hi, my name is TJ Lyons. I came in here with a really bad toothache and decided to get dentures. I had six teeth pulled and surprisingly, no pain at all. This is the day after and I still have no pain. I am totally amazed. They're really professional here and I would highly recommend them. And can we take a look at your dentures? Good, now how many of you are happy with that patient and he had a good message? Raise your hand if you're happy with the patient and he had a good message. Yeah, it was a great message. Yeah, great close up, good. What did we do? We added an animated outro. You should always do this with your video. I have a little like branded outro. You know, it just puts it puts a little polish on your videos. If you need one, let Amy know from Bloomberg Digital. Um, we got a before and after of the patient. We put some music. We did some editing. Let Amy know if you need some editing help. Three hundred dollars worth of editing to blur the background, crop, music, outro, and uh, the intro. Let's look at the final product. Hi, my name is TJ Lyons. I came in here with a really bad toothache and decided to get dentures. I had six teeth pulled and surprisingly no pain at all. This is the day after and I still have no pain. I am totally amazed. They're really professional here and I would highly recommend them. Okay, give it a vote. Thumbs up, medium or down. What do you think? Yeah, it was great. Now listen, $300 of video editing. And somebody might go, well, that's, you know, $300 and well, okay. But guess what? He posted this, a low resolution version. When we do the, your video editing, we give you a full resolution, horizontal, like YouTube video. We do, you know, this size for your website and for your YouTube channel. Then we give you a slim version for your social media. And then we give you a downscaled version for your Google business. So we gave all three versions to the client. He posted it on his Google My Business. He did not post it on his YouTube or his website. He was just too busy. Posted it on his Google business. He said, Dan, we've probably made $125,000 from that video alone. People who've come into the office said, I saw that video. I want you to just get the magnitude of what's available. This is called social proof. Social proof. It's somebody else talking about you rather than you talking about you. Now, I want to analyze some of the aspects of this because I want you to look at how fast we came in with what. So when we talk about attract interest and get the message across, people haven't got tolerance today. So look at how fast I came in with the before photo. Hi, my name is TJ Lyons. I came in here with. Okay, good. I'm in three seconds with the before photo. How many seconds? Show me on your fingers. How many seconds are you coming in? Three. And today, maybe come in at two seconds. Just go to Salvatore Dental's videos and their testimonials. We come in hard and heavy with a statement and then a before photo statement and then a before photo um uh, we've really cropped in toothache and decided to get dentures i had six teeth pulled and so now we've cropped we've cropped but we blurred the schedule out so there's no hipaa violation and surprisingly and then the no after pain at all this is the day after and i still simple stuff you can do it look at the quality of that photo i'm the before and after photos are horrible almost as horrible as the original video right but that's video editing we didn't alter anything. We just kind of tucked in on certain things, right? So get your marketing out there. Progress, not perfection. Just as Abby correctly said, <clears throat> quantity, 
then quality. You'll get better and better and better at it, okay? But I want you to focus on getting someone on video. Get You know, if it's, if it's great quality, great. If it was kind of rough, send it to us. Let us play with it. Thumbs up if you understand. Just get it done. Get it done. You'll get better over time. You get better over time. Don't beat yourself up. I'm going to I'm going to show you some things that I think are are going to be helpful for you to get that attract step in place. Let me share my screen. To attract patients, you can use these this, this is marketing data. Does it apply to dentistry? Well, you might be able to make it work. But these are keywords that get people to look. Secret, premium, exclusive, cutting edge, bonus, limited, wait list. Okay? You do what you need to do to make those things, you know, apply or not, okay? But I want you to just think what those are some keywords that get people to stop in their tracks. Next, to create curiosity, to get people to, you, you, it's called a hook in marketing. And I kind of hate that because it seems kind of crass, but you're trying to get some, trying to hook somebody, their attention. It's like you're out there fishing and you're trying to get the fish to bite on the hook right now because we're doing something good for people. This is okay, it's not like a, a mean or destructive thing. Curiosity, it's called building a mystery. And you want to build a mystery. You want to get somebody to look. You want to get them to stop what they're doing. Hidden, unique, private, little known, insider. These are some keywords. You can use them or not. To create FOMO, fear of missing out. Fast, trick. Here's a trick to get your teeth their widest. You know, it's powerful. Hack. Here's a hack on how to avoid, you know, drills and needles at the dentist. Time-saving improved and easy. Those are FOMO words. To create urgency, final, temporary, limited, boosted, latest, immediately, today. So let's work out how we could use a couple of these. For a limited time only, we're doing a free exam and x-ray. For a limited time, we're offering a free smile representation of what Invisalign could do for your mouth. Valued at blah, blah, blah. You know, this is the latest technology this rendering software will, will give you a representation of what your smile makeover could look at, like, or whatever whitening could look like. The next people who immediately contact us will be eligible for blah, blah, blah. So today only, hey, if you respond today. So these are some of the things, and I want you to work with it. And I, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable with these things. I, I, I just want to get a little fuel, a little fodder for the fire. So, and then the last thing I want to do is we got about 11 minutes here. First of all, how has today been going? What's been valuable? Put it in the chat. What's been valuable about today's webinar? What are you taking and you're going to walk away with? I'd love to hear. What would you like to know more about? And do you have any questions for me? This is all good. Anybody want to raise their hand and ask a question? What does FOMO stand for? Fear of missing out. FOMO. Fear of missing out. If they don't jump on this special right now, they're going to miss out. As opposed to a new patient special that's on the website forever and ever and ever, people know that the, you know it's always there. Whereas you could say for a limited time only. Now, you might still have that special, but then you feature something else special. Light bulb moment. Outro on our videos. Good, Abby. Abby, yeah. Amy, just take a note for Dr. Perry and, and team. <clears throat> Imagery to attract. Great, Amy. Love that. And listen, I know a lot of you are sometimes scared of putting like a before smile and because you're like, well, that's kind of gross. Yeah. Yeah. It's disruptively gross. It's disruptively gross. In marketing, folks, we're here to disrupt. So I also like the idea of wedding specials for the whole party. That's a great idea. Thank you, Amy. I'm glad I thought of that. My question, were those before and after pics taken at the office? They were. They were taken at the office and some people say, you know, I forgot to get the before photo. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, put it in your workflow. Don't ever, ever fail to get before photos and after photos on anything that has to do with cosmetic. I would say anything clinically, you know, we're, we're in a bit of a litigious society today where people like to sue, not, not that you need to walk around and worry about everything, but I would always get before and after photos. You can upload them in your practice management software. So it's built for that. It's a great place to house them. Um, but say you didn't get a before photo. Everybody, take out your phone right now. Take out your phone. Open up your phone. Go into, go into your Photos app. If you have an iPhone, scroll down to under Media Types and look at Selfies. You've got a category for selfies. You can look at just the time that your front camera was used. If you go under Albums, scroll down under Media Types. There's videos, selfies, live photos. Go into Selfies. That's every time you've ever used your camera using the forward-facing camera. Ask a patient to pick out a selfie photo that represents what they looked like before their treatment. 
they will happily supply you one for a before photo. Okay. So if you fail to get the before photo, you got the after photo. You can get the after photo because you got the patient in the practice, but get them to send you a before photo from their, and they'll generally pick a, a, a somewhat flattering, but representative of their smile. Alexis here, I've uh, started uh, notating uh, in the appointments, taking responsibility in my position and creating constant reminders for clinical staff. Love that. Love that, Alexis. Now, Alexis is doing it. Uh, Salvatore Dental is doing it. They do a video, a TikTok video every week, and it's in the schedule. Every week they have to do a TikTok and it's in the schedule. It literally is blocked out in the schedule where the team get, comes together and they have to create a TikTok. And then, of course, they run it on Facebook and, and Instagram and, and stuff. So schedule it in your time. Like, actually build it in the schedule. If you don't build it in the schedule, it might not get done. But you, as a team, you're skilled at following a schedule. So build your marketing into your schedule. Sierra, progress uh, over perfection. Definitely something for us to work on. It's, it's so true because, you know, we're all such perfectionists. And I know... Many of us go, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. get over it. I want to show you one last thing. And this is the smile gallery. There's Dr. Rizvi. If you guys want some great social media pages, My Dentist for Life, that's Dr. Rizvi. She might even be here. She got a great page, My Dentist for Life. She's Bloomberg Digital Client. Monahan Dentistry, he's here. He's really done fantastic. Featuring the staff, featuring the patients. He's doing videos. You know, you just got to get over yourself. We are all critical of ourselves. We all sound stupid to ourselves when we're on video. We always look horrible to ourselves when we're on video. Get over it. You know, listen, it's it, everybody else is fine on you. But look at this wet hand glove, uh, wet hand glove race. <clears throat> Love that one. Good. Another good page, Smile Keepers, Dr. Sharma's page. If you guys want some different pages to look at, this is a great one, Dr. Giannino. Dr. David Giannino, it's a great page. Salvatore Dental, great page. But I want to show you some of this on Dr. Salvatore's page. They really mix it up with life stuff. It's his Father's Day. Look at this. Look at this result, folks. And Dr. Salvatore always says, look at the eyes of the patient in the after photo. There's always more life. And it's so true. He takes these with every patient. He takes a before photo and an after photo in the exact same spot. Look at the eyes. But they've got some great photos where they do stuff. I can't play it because I'll get a ding on YouTube because it's got it's got sounds that, you know, this one is just fantastic. You just got to go see that one. I want you to really take time and involve your team. And this is what they were doing during the ABCs. They were all, they were live streaming training, the ABCs. And our teams are breaking up and they are making know, volcanoes. <laughs> They're going to decorate them. And then our patients are going to get to vote as to who made the best volcano. Um, so our teams are over here. So we have Dr. Rich with Fan and Amanda. Cheers. Cheers. And then we have Kaylee and Chelsea and Dr. Vera is on their team as well. And they just, they just really they have a blast. They celebrate their team. Happy one-year anniversary with Casey. Big thank you to Capital Region Periodontics and Dental Implants for the yummy lunch. Do you see they're giving shout outs to other practices? You know, congratulations to Abby for baby Emma. That's her new baby. You know, it's very culture thick and rich. And it's just, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's the ones uh, who wait for you to finish your chart notes. They just have a blast. So I want you to study some of these pages if you need some ideas. We love a good ice cream break on warm days. Good. And folks, we're at our time. How was today's webinar? Thumbs up, medium, or Dan, this sucked. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, it's been so great seeing everybody here. If you have any needs, if anything that I've mentioned, if you need to bump up your marketing, you let us know. Reach out to me personally. I have nothing on it. Just, hey, Dan, can you look at our website? Can you look at our social media? I got a whole team here who's standing by that will give you an honest account of what do we see, what opportunity exists there. So just danb at mgeonline.com. Danb at mgeonline.com. That's the email I watch the most. Whatever help you need. Hey, Dan, we need to you know, check out our sales line. What do you suggest we could do at MGE? Dan, we need to bump up our marketing. Hey, Dan, our schedule needs to be filled. Hey, Dan, 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 whatever. Send it to me. I'll get the respective team, whether it's MGE, Bloomberg Digital, 
whatever. We'll get you the help you need, okay? Really want to make sure your summer is awesome. Want to make sure you're having a good time. You're enthusiastic about going into your summer. You get your team enthusiastic about the summer. Everybody at the top of the tone scale. And until the next webinar, we'll be available for you. But um, certainly hope to see you at the next webinar. Thank you for coming today. We'll see you at the next one.